And good morning. Welcome to a special time, special program today. Focus on Stafford County coming your way this morning at 8.30 instead of our traditional time of 11.30. That's because we have Royals baseball later on this morning, but this will work out perfectly. Joining us on the program today is Stafford County Economic Development Director, Carolyn Dunn, and Stafford County Eco Devo Program Director, Ashley Bevan. We're also going to be talking to a special guest today in our second segment. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Carolyn, we talked to you last week. You had some great news. Looks like we're getting close to uh, bringing a grocery store to the community of St. John. We also talked to the owner of White's Food Liner. That's Pat White. He's going to be joining us from the road here coming up in our next segment. Kind of talk about his company. It's a longstanding company. He's been in business since 1953, I believe. Uh, It's true. Congratulations. Thank you. We are just tickled pink to have them going down this path with us. So what I keep reminding, it's, you know, a piece of progress, but we're, you know, not at the end goal yet. It is a letter of intent. And what that is, is it outlines the expectation that they're going to be entering into a long-term lease with Stafford County Economic Development. We will own the building and, again, lease it to them for for a long term. So that is contingent, though, on some, some pieces that are the next steps. We've got to get bids and be able to construct the building in the budget we expect for us to actually be able to deliver on our end the building that they need. But provided that all those things fall into place, we'll have a grocery store next spring. And and having that letter of intent, though, is what allows us to be able to move forward on the financing and the bids and everything. We're not just, you know, building it with a dream that someone will come someday. We have somebody right here with us that's ready to progress. Tell me how this letter of intent came about. I know it came over a long period of time with uh, different uh, potential candidates. And I know you'd been talking with Pat for probably almost from the get go on this and the, the role the grocery committee played and everything that came together to finally get this letter of intent in place, Carolyn. Well, it was a lot of people over a period of time. The grocery committee looked at, at several different options. There were a lot of us that would just go to different grocery stores around the state independent grocery stores to either kind of observe how others have done it or just try to get some leads on on potentially good companies to work with. And the grocery committee liked White's Food Liner the best hands down for a number of reasons. One, they have a longstanding record in merchandising groceries. They know this type of business. Two, they work in small towns. They understand that small town dynamic and the importance of, you know, supporting your local schools and and just they understand small towns. Thirdly, one of the things that really stood out is that they've got two generations in the business right now. I can remember one conversation in particular talking about a a potential candidate, and and they liked him, but they also said, well, what's going to happen in 10 years when he's ready to retire? He doesn't have business partners, and that's not the case with whites. So we had a lot of that kind of you know, I, I think of it as due diligence on our, our city's behalf, because if we're going to make this large investment for our community, we want to have some confidence that we're working with a business partner that's well positioned to make it work, too. You said something on a show here uh, recently that was very interesting to me. And one, of course, we always hear the shop local. We need to shop local, stay at home, shop at local. And you said, well, that's okay as long as our local businesses are stepping up and providing the services that make it, well, attractive to shop local. And I know that was important to you to find in a grocer here because I know you want, well, you want the support of the community in the area, but if it's not going to be something that's going to make sense for people to do that, you got to have a good product, and I think that's what you're happy about here. It's exactly it. I don't know if I, I've told this anecdote on the air, but when I was doing my little tour of grocery stores around the state, I can remember two in particular that I went into, and I, you know, planned to buy a few things. I had a few things that our family needed, and I almost felt like I had to really search for something that I really wanted to buy, that it was at the price that I thought was fair or whatever, selection that looks like it's turning over and fresh and all that kind of stuff. And in contrast, last fall, I was through Medicine Lodge and stopped at White's Food Liner 
just to, again, kind of check it out. And I ended up walking out with $110 worth of groceries and feeling good about it. They were things that I wanted to consume, you know, and that our family would beat. You know, they were, it was a combination of good prices, good variety. I remember picking up a few things that I didn't have on my list, but I thought, well, that looks fun to try. We'll enjoy that. And that's the kind of, again, the kind of store you want to have in your community. What's the timeline on this? Just, I, I, you kind of said next fall, but I mean, what's going to be happening here? Well, the, the land that we have for this is actually leased back to the previous owner until September while he's in the process of building a new location for, for his store. It, it won't happen sooner than September for us to, to break dirt. And that's probably, you know, even October is when everything, if everything falls into place just perfectly. And then hopefully in the spring, we'll have an open store. I know when we talked to you last week, you brought up some very good points. One that you're going to have a grocery store there. That's great. Mm -hmm. You have a place to shop now, but there's a lot of things that go along with that that happen because you have that store that's generating business in a small community. Well, I, <laughs> I mean, definitely sales tax for one. There you go. You know. Yeah. There's a good ripple effect. I think we have, I think, a lot of um, good feedback from the community as a whole, partly because other businesses have seen their own sales lag after the closing of, of Dylan. So I think just you know, that idea of activity leads to more activity. You know, one other thing that I might kind of give some background on that has led to this letter of intent and part of why that process has taken more than just a couple of months. You know, we had been talking with White's Food Liner from the very beginning and he quickly, you know, said, eh, it's not a, it's not a town as big as what we like to focus on. He kind of had some, some things that they look for when they think about locating a store and we didn't, we weren't quite there population wise, especially a couple of other factors. So what has made this though, a situation that they can feel, I think, good about moving forward with is the way that we're combining several elements of business into the same building to try to maximize the amount of traffic so that we really can hit, you know, sales goals, even though we're in a smaller town. So the last piece of that was looking at fuel sales. And they, they've had, they have another um, location where they do have fuel pumps and they know what that can add. So we had independent study done by a, a professional fuel analyst in, in Texas. And so with that independent data, we can see that our non-fuel sales at this location will likely increase 10 to 15 percent. And, and the other piece of it is that we can see that our county is already losing a lot of its sales to out of county. People are already going out of county to buy fuel, just as they are pharmacy and groceries. And if we can kind of make it a one-stop shop for all of those kind of basic needs, we think that it's you know, set up for success. And that's what makes it an attractive thing for the White family, not only to invest its money in, because they will, even though we're owning the building, they've still got a lot of investment in the inventory and the working capital and the employees. And, you know, it's an investment for them too, not only financially, but in terms of their time and management. They could be they could be going somewhere else, but they're, they're, they're coming to St. John. One quick thing, and we'll get Pat White on the phone with us here this morning, is that, and I don't know, maybe it was more me that, that kind of, you know, you said, oh, no, we're losing a grocery store. We don't have any place to shop for groceries and things. But you lost some payroll with that. I mean, there's a lot of people employed, you know, whether a part-time or a full-time basis at, at a store like this, it's going to add payroll back into the community. That's huge. It is. You know, for a store that has extended hours like this one will have, a combination of full and part-time employees, they anticipate around 35. That's payroll of 500000 a year. When I look at the projected sales tax impact, a combination of property and sales tax will be 60000 a year. It's another consumer on our city utility grid. Um, we expect that that's going to be $50,000 or so in dollars worth of electricity consumption. So again, there's more than one way that this can have an impact. Carolyn Dunn with us, Ashley Bevan. We're going to talk with Pat White. He's bringing White's Food Liner to St. John. We will talk to the owner coming up right after this. This is Focus on Stafford County on 1590 KVGB and 97.7 FM. 
Welcome back. Focus on Stafford County this morning on 1590 KVGB 977 FM. Steve Webster with you. Carolyn Dunn in studio along with Ashley Bevan from Stafford County Eco Devo. And our special guest is Pat White, who, along with his wife Tanya, own White's Food Liner, who's uh, they've been in business for a long, long time. Uh, they'll be located in a new uh, grocery store in St. John next year if everything. All the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and things like that, but it's looking very good. Uh, Pat, thanks for taking time to join us today as uh, you are on the road. Thanks for talking to us today. Talk about your your White's Food Liner and the other locations you're located that you have stores in. Uh, Yes, my parents started the business in 1953 in the little town of Coldwater. We've grown since then, you know, very slowly. Kind of, we've, you know, gained some stores, lost some stores. And right now we have uh, four locations, Phillipsburg, Kansas, Kingman, Kansas, uh, Medicine Lodge, and in, in Pawnee, Oklahoma. And we have, you know, my wife and I bought the stores from my siblings kept three or four, a couple of years ago. And uh, we have two sons that are back in the business with us. We're, we're looking to keep growing if we can and, you know, kind of strategically. You know, not just growth for growth sakes, but getting in the right spot. We love the business and uh, love love working with the customers and suppliers. We've enjoyed so far our work with, with Stafford County. We try to you know we, we try to reinvest in our stores. Part of what we do is you know I mean I, we think we have some pretty good uh, you know, examples to live by with the Dillons and that are in our areas. You know, we. we we can't. We don't have the resources to be as good as they are to have everything they have. But we want to give the people in the small towns a reasonable facsimile of what they have, and we want to give them lots of choices and have a lot of some of the same things that they offer to people. Has that been in a little smaller in a little smaller box? Yeah. Yeah, it is, and that's really kind of what uh, Carolyn and I were talking about uh, before you came on. Was uh, obviously you you found a niche that works, and what is, has that been your the reason for your success in these smaller communities? Is kind of because you told me last week you said, well, just because you live in a small town doesn't mean you don't want the same things as the people in a big town do. Right. Yeah. My, my our parents kind of instilled that thought in us that in. It, it, you know, it's 25 years ago, and today it's become even more relevant because of the internet, TV, food network. I mean, people are exposed to everything, and they want to try it. And, and it's you know, there's some, I know some grocers that tend not to get new items or tend not to change the way they've been doing things for the last 20 years, and I and I think that hurts. We're trying to stay ahead of the game. It's it's not easy, but uh, it makes it more fun and more interesting too. Do you have? But, a, a, but, a, but it is challenging. Do you have a pharmacy in any of your other stores? No, we do not. Okay, so that's that should be a nice. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a good asset. Yep. Uh, now, you also told me last week that, you know, St. John is not a, a typically, it's a little bit smaller market than what you would typically maybe locate into, but Stafford County Economic Development, Carolyn Dunn, they, they kind of were pretty persuasive, weren't they? Yeah, they, Carolyn knows how to twist the arm. <laughs> <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> it, it's a plus, and she is persistent. And that's, and so, we, yeah, we respect that and enjoyed working with her. And, and, and the whole group that we've met down there, and it's been you know, great to work with. They don't get surprised by some of the numbers you throw out, and some of the requests. They just try to find a way to make it work. And that's what's really, I think, a little bit unique, or at least a, it's an example that a lot of towns should live by. They, they find a way. And they also, uh, you mentioned pers- persistence, but I think probably that that's made you and Tanya feel pretty comfortable too. They do. This group seems to do their homework pretty good. So uh, that's probably helped a, a little bit as well, hasn't it? Oh, sure. Yeah. They, they've been very knowledgeable and you know, just everybody we work with. Is, I mean, they have, I think they, they really know what they want. They, they want a store and they want a, you know, a viable store and they've worked to try to do it. And you know, we still got a lot of, 
still got a long ways to go, I think, but we sure come a long ways, too. Uh, Pat White joining us here as he's on the road this morning. The owner, along with uh, wife Tanya of White's Food Liner, and uh, kind of d- d- what can people expect from White's Food Liner day in and day out? It, it's been uh, something that's a staple of your business, Pat. Well, that's one of the things we do preach is consistency. Is that we don't, you know, we don't want to be up and down. We want if you come in any about any day, any time of the day, any 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 time of the month. You're going to get you know, the same consistent products and service, and some, that sounds kind of boring in some ways. But I think that's 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 what we strive for. And uh, but but you, we do want to. We try to be innovative. We want to have a lot of fresh items, a lot of perishable items, and so that's it's it's pretty simple, but it's it's pretty tough to execute 365 days a year and, and that's we do have a lot of good people and it takes a lot of good people to do that well uh, pat white joining us here this morning again on the road pat we appreciate the time this morning and uh, uh you've got pretty good feedback from the community so far i imagine you're probably a pretty popular guy down in stafford county right now <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about that <laughs> Well, Pat, thanks for spending the time this morning. We're looking forward to uh, working with you in the future, and congratulations on the new endeavor. And as uh, we move forward, uh, looking forward to uh, talking with you more. Thanks for your time today. Thank you, Steve, and Carolyn and Ashley, too. Thank you. Okay. Pat White joining us here from the road, somewhere between Wichita and El Dorado, heading on the road today. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more Focus on Stafford County right after this. Welcome back. Final segment of Focus on Stafford County today on 1590 KVGB 977 FM. Carolyn Dunn, Ashley Bevan with us. Ashley, you're excited about this too. This could save some mileage, right? Yes, it will. Yeah. I was telling Carolyn I had to go to Pratt yesterday right after work just to get a couple prescriptions from Dylan's. You know, and I've I've had them mail stuff to my house before, but by the time I get it, the boxes are smashed and the pill bottles are broken <laughs> open, so you know, you have to make that drive sometimes, and I'm looking forward to the pharmacy coming. So Yeah, it's, it is going to be great, and uh, Pat White, very nice man to talk to, so we're looking forward to uh, working with him a little bit more in the yeah. future. Ashley, you've got a few things here that yeah. we need to talk about, and uh, federal income tax credits. Yeah, so yesterday, Carolyn actually went to a meeting up at the city office. We had a Kansas Works representative in there talking with us, and he was giving us information on the work opportunity tax credit, which is a federal tax credit available to employers who hire individuals from eligible target groups with significant barriers to employment. And the one we might highlight is 18 to 39 year olds living in a rural renewal county, which Stafford County is in. And that is defined as any county outside a metropolitan statistical area that had a net population loss during 1990 through 1999. I don't know if Carolyn wants to chime in on this a little or not. But. Well, you know, I think it's one. I think it boils down to it's one of those things that has a few hoops to jump jump through. Uh-huh. But if you're hiring people in that in that age range and you're a for profit business in Stafford County, you can get some tax benefit. So why not? You know, <laughs> it, you have to fill out the form um, uh, IRS form eighty eight fifty before the person is hired. Um, you have to turn that into the um, state workforce agency, which is the Kansas Department of Commerce in Kansas. Um, but then it entitles you to to take some tax credit at the end of the year, and that's for a, two years for any business. For any business, and this is hiring a full time person. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't even think it has to be full time. Honestly, mm-hmm. Hi- hire a person. Wow. Yep, they have to work at least 120 hours in the first year of employment for. The employer to receive the tax credit great opportunity mm-hmm. probably a great opportunity for whites they'll probably have a bunch of young men in there doing the the, the grocery checkout stuff right and young men and women mm-hmm. I, I should put that in there <laughs> uh, stafford chamber of commerce annual picnic coming up soon june 3rd are you barbecuing ashley or is what so this is actually the friday june 2nd starting at 7 p.m. in the city park. It's kind of like a community-wide event to kick off summer. Uh, They have the ice cream social. Uh, The Stars After School program is giving out some awards to their kids. 
a library, they've kind of gone undergone some new, I don't know how you want to describe that. I mean, they're doing some renovations. They got new books in there. They have new volunteers, but they're kicking off their summer reading program called Build a Better World. And then some other possibilities that they were looking on bringing in is some fire trucks, a bouncy house, and some vendors. So it should be a fun evening for the Stafford community. Friday, June, June 2nd. June 2nd. Yes. Sorry, I put the wrong date on. No, it was my, <laughs> Our it cheat was my sheet mistake. Here. It I'm was sorry. my mistake. Uh, Gray's Studio. We haven't haven't really talked about them in a while. This is really exciting, but they're having an open house tomorrow night. They are. This is in conjunction with the St. John Annual City Festival Jubilee, which is every Memorial Day weekend. Um, but Gray Studio uh, will highlight a couple things. First of all, they're having an open house. Um, second of all, on Saturday, there's a new event, which is the Youth Creations Art Auction. It's a fundraiser for USD 350 Education Foundation. There will be um, art created by St. John High School students and um, an auctioned off as a, as a fundraiser for the foundation. All of this, I thought, was kind of worth highlighting, too. Um, just a, a nice opportunity to see more of what Gray Studio has to offer. We're in the process of um, helping them with a, a new grant application that, if it's um, awarded, would allow them to completely finish the renovations to that um to that building and really get it full full steam ahead going as a um, you know a place that offers ongoing programs and, and that start <clears throat> that's been ongoing i mean this started a few years ago it right did. and you know when when they acquired that building it was really not far from being Falling at a point. over yeah. right um they really focused on the roof right away because if they if they didn't kind of seal that envelope of the building I think it really wouldn't have been too long until it would have been past the point of return and uh, so they've focused on the exterior of the building with the initial grants that they um, received but on the inside it's it's still just um, <laughs> well it's kind of I think at the same stage we were in last summer when we had the bike and build students come in and and tear down all the plaster and right. lath from the walls. So now it needs to be put back together, and that's what the second um, you know set of if, if this grant is successful, what it would pay for. So with that, um, one of the things that will help this grant compete well is is showing that there is a lot of community support for the work. So if anyone would be willing to write a letter of support saying that they think that this would be a benefit to our community, we would love to include those letters in our grant application. And they can provide those to us at the Stafford County Economic Development Office. We'll make sure that Grace Studio gets that in their grant application. And a quick history you've got like 30 seconds to explain gray studio and the historical relevance it has in stafford county well it was the um the place that william gray did his photography work he was known for or he's become known for his extensive glass negative collection um the building that remains is one that you can tell is an artist's environment. It's got this really unique north-facing window, and the vision is to be able to renovate that so that it is an art studio now for new artists. It also has an apartment, and so we can bring in resident artists to um, initiate their own art space business, but at the same time offer educational enhancement program programming for our community. Boy, a lot of exciting things happening down there that, with uh, White's Food Line. What's the response been? All, all positive. You know, we, we've had stuff on Facebook, and we just have been tickled that everything is positive. So, yeah, we even had somebody from outside the area say, we wish they'd come to Goodland. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> well, sorry, that's... they're coming here first. <laughs> and as you, as we understand, if you're in radio and you're not going to do things that please everybody, you probably get a few negative comments now and then. It's nice to get mostly positive ones, right? It is, right. We call them <laughs> negatrons, right? The, the, the <laughs> negatrons are out there. But <laughs> I'm glad you didn't hear from any on this because I don't know what they'd say. Wow, we're going to have a grocery store here in town with a pharmacy and, and gas? Uh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Imagine I probably hear that. Guys, thanks for coming up here today at your special time. We'll be back at the regular time uh, 
next month. Focus on Stafford County on 1590 KVGB 97.7 FM. News is next. Have a great day, everybody.